Hey everyone, John Hutchinson with Traders Reserves, Filthy Rich, Dirt Poor. I want to welcome you to a special week of our uh, daily newsletter. This week's focus is going to be on how to beat a bear market. I don't have to tell you how difficult the stock market has been since January. In this five-part series this week, I'm going to break down some unique elements to where the market has been and where we see the market going in the next six to 12 months. Uh, and I'm breaking this down into five parts because I don't want to overwhelm you uh, with excessive economic information or details or numbers. But what I'm going to do this week is start today with where we are now in the S&P 500 and take a, a look at a couple of unique ways to consider the challenges we face and the opportunities that exist uh, in the future. And the future isn't that far away. I, I know it's tough right now, but when you when you walk through the park with me on the, the things that I'm going to lay out for you, I think you'll see that there's, a, there's, there's something coming. There's an end coming, right? It's not just light at the end of the tunnel. The end of the tunnel is, is closer than what I think we believe it is. And then I'm going to introduce something called the stack. And I'll explain that when I get to it. Um, and I'll be doing that all week this week. So let's roll right into where we are now. And I'm recording this on Friday morning, September 16th. Pretty sure the market's going to open lower, uh, closed a little bit lower than that 3,900 level yesterday, Thursday, uh, Friday, the Thursday, the 15th of September. So when you view this video on Monday, some of these, the lines, the numbers, et cetera, will obviously have changed by the close on Friday. But uh, I wanted to get a head start on this because I'm really, I, I think, think this is going to help everybody have some, a way forward to, to, to plan your trading, even think about your investing, uh, but to have a picture forward. So resistance right now has consistently been right around the 4,200 level in the S&P 500. You can see on that resistance, that blue line, uh, we've been able to break above it and then fell right back below it. Uh, that was following uh, uh, Pow Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole conference. Uh, and you can see the last couple of days, uh, actually the last three days, we've been sitting right on that support line, uh, right around the 3,900 level. So this is, this is an, a tight range. Uh, and it's also an important range and we, we have to stay as close to the, I think we have to stay as close to this range as we can in the weeks ahead. Uh, I, I think that may be difficult. We may dip below, we may recover, but we need to stay as close as we can between those, those two numbers. And, and tomorrow I'll show you why, uh, if we break significantly below 3,900, um, and I think we will today, uh, Friday because FedEx reported earnings and significantly reduced forward guidance for their earnings, which will likely push us back down toward that 3750 line. Right? That's the uh-oh line. That's the line where if we go below 3750, we will retest the June lows in the S&P 500. So Bear that in mind as you are putting on new trades, you may want to reduce capital exposure at the present time until the market is stable, until more of the known unknowns become known knowns, what the market knows it doesn't know right now versus what the market will know in the next several weeks uh, we need to get that stability back. So don't be afraid to reduce position sizes, reduce capital in play, even reduce the number of trades. I don't advocate running away from the market in full. I don't think it's necessary, but as much caution as you can on the capital management and trade management side is advised. The, Fed, the Federal Reserve is meeting next week. Uh, there is now, uh, we're now starting to see a an increasing percentage of uh, individuals who expect them that the Fed may raise rates a full point, a full interest rate point. Uh, the market had priced in following Jerome Powell's conference a like almost a guaranteed three quarter point increase. Uh, it doesn't matter which of those numbers the Fed actually moves. If the Fed goes a full point, 
the market may go down, but that won't be as much of a shock to the market as the third bullet point here is or could be. And that is what's known as the terminal rate. Terminal rate is simply the Federal Reserve saying we're going to this level in interest rates and no higher. And that terminal rate has been creeping higher in the last several months. Uh, when the Fed originally started this rate increase cycle, they set 3 to 3.5 percent as their terminal rate. That has now shifted to 4 to 4.5 percent in some uh, in some circles. So that's a significant swing in higher interest rates. The reason for many of you that that interest rate number is important is specifically if you are trading or investing in high beta stocks or technology stocks or small cap stocks. Those interest rates have significant impact on the earnings of companies in those three categories. That is the one, one and in my view, only reason to really pay attention to what the Fed says next week and again in the, at the October meeting as it relates to their interest rate policy. Because until the Fed has stopped raising interest rates or indicates that it is reaching a point where it will stop interest rates from rising, excuse me, stop increasing interest rates, uh, those three categories will continue to lag the overall market. They will continue to perform poorly. You're, you're not going to see a, a massive rally in the NASDAQ when the borrowing costs for those companies are continuing to increase. The same thing for small cap stocks in the Russell. Uh, when borrowing costs are higher, and frankly, from all small businesses, costs are higher across the board from people, labor, to materials, to services, to borrowing costs, to advertising. Uh, that, is, that is a worrisome sign. Small business is always the growth driver of every bull market in history. So, and then finally, higher beta stocks if the if the are largely the Nasdaq stocks. Typically, those are the companies you see on the Nasdaq. Uh, so they're, they're they're intertwined in that sense. But those those categories can't lead the next major rally uh, until we know what that what's that maximum impact to borrowing costs in the business in the business uh, economy. It's important to remind you that, and I will cover this again later in in the week. Number one, we're not in a recession, not yet. The projections for a recession are into 2023, meaning a Q1, Q2, maybe a Q3 recession. <clears throat> Whether that transpires, don't know. But as it relates to right now, we're not there. So it's, it, that's why it's important to recognize that the market is still trying to find its direction. It is still struggling with valuation, something we will cover tomorrow. It is still struggling with inflation and the Federal Reserve's policy to fight inflation, which we'll cover later in this week as well. So taken together right now, these are the lines in the sand. These are the, the points that matter. If we go below a certain point here, that, that honestly, that will tell you, I, in my opinion, that we're closer to a bottom uh, a real true bottom. We needed to retest that 3,600 level from Ju the June low. And the reason for that is to validate that as a strong support line for the S&P 500. That hasn't happened. Uh, the chart that you're looking at here is a weekly chart. I use these when I want to get a better sense of where support resistance is within the within uh, a, a roughly a time frame, whether I'm looking at a several months or several years. Uh, right now, I'm looking at year to date for the most part, as you can see marked out for you. So use this simply as a way to say if, if we get down to that 3750 level, we're probably looking at another three to five percent lower to retest that 3600. That's okay as long as we don't go below 3600. But if we retest that June bottom and then rally off of that, that will help to solidify where the floor is in the S&P 500, given current information, current economics, uh, current GDP, et cetera. So with that in mind, I want to remind everybody, you're not alone. 
You are not alone. If you're having a tough year uh, in, with your investment portfolio, <laughs> you're not alone. This is 13 of the 15 highest weighted stocks in the S&P 500. So if you own an index fund, you own these 13 stocks. And these are the highest weighted, not rated, weighted. Uh, the two that I left out of here were Berkshire Hathaway and uh, Google, Google Class A shares. I didn't see the need to re replicate Google. Uh, and Berkshire Hathaway is more of a fund uh, than not, not, a, not an individual corporate stock, right? So what you're looking at across these 15 companies, and one of the things that I suggest you do is keep track of this, is a cross-section of the economy. Right, you have technology. You have uh, uh, you have health services. Uh, you have internet services, internet service providers. Uh, you have energy. You have banking. You have financial. You have consumer across all of these uh, all of these different companies here, from Apple to Home Depot. If you own just these thirteen companies, your portfolio is down twenty three percent this year, and one of the one of the topics that I'll cover a little bit later this this week is why we are closer to a 1972 1973 bear market than we are a 2008 2009 financial collapse right the conditions in the marketplace are more consistent with what the economy and the market experienced in almost 50 years ago actually 50 years ago it is exactly 50 years ago isn't it uh, versus what we saw just uh, 15 years ago, 10, 14 years ago. So if you're holding any collection of these stocks, you're having a tough year. The only stock that has appreciated out of these is ExxonMobil. And the only reason it's up is because gas prices, oil prices were so elevated through the second quarter, this company couldn't help themselves but make more money uh, and substantially more money. Billions in more billions more in profits for oil and, and gas companies. So, looking when you look at it this way, right? You you get a better sense of what I mean when I say, for example, technology or high beta stocks are. That's where the struggle is. Microsoft twenty five percent, Amazon twenty five, almost twenty five percent, Google twenty five percent, Nvidia fifty percent, and that's after uh, they split. Uh, you know, Facebook, Meta, uh, 55%. So this, that is the growth uh, driver in the NASDAQ ultimately is the growth driver for those higher beta stocks. Well, it's not happening right now. We have to be patient. And when I say be patient, that's why I remind you that you're not alone. Every individual investor is struggling with the same problems you are. If you're trading, however, you have more potential, more opportunities to break out of these negatives because of your status as a trader, especially those of you who are trading options traders. I've said this before, and I'll remind you again, you are the elite. You are the elite among investors and self-directed investors and traders. You are doing something that almost nobody else can do for themselves. So as difficult a year as it has been, as dif difficult uh, the next four months likely will continue to be, keep fighting, keep learning, keep trading, because you will come out ahead. You're going to have down weeks. You're going to have losing trades. That's always a known. But your potential is greater than people who are simply sitting on investments and hoping and waiting for things to turn around. Speaking of that. If you can eliminate fear, what you're looking at right now is your opportunity board. For a general view of things, I wanted to use ETFs as a comparison point. These are the same ETFs. These are all spiders um, from the XLC down to the XLU. On the right side is the five-year performance across all of those categories. On the left side is the one year is, is the excuse me year to date performance across these sector ETFs. If you can eliminate fear, those sectors which are performing the worst, with the exception, in my opinion, of communication services, 
are the areas where you will have the best opportunities for potential profits in the next six to 12 months. Because eventually, all of those sectors will turn green again. When will it happen? I don't know. If I knew, first of all, I'd sell it to you. And second of all, I'd make money from it myself. What I do know is that every one of these sectors that's in the red will eventually be in the green. It will take time, but the opportunity is within those sectors, technology, materials, industrials, healthcare, consumer discretionary. All of those sectors are the power sectors, the money sectors for driving the S&P 500 higher. So if you can start paying attention to these sectors, start even trade within these sectors, whether you use these ETFs or use individual stocks that these these ETFs track, then you have a path to identify stocks that you can use to own or trade over the next 12 months so that you don't wind up with a negative balance at the end of the year, right? So that you don't lose money, whether that's at the end of this year or at the end of next 12 months is up to you, right? But this is an opportunity board. The way to look at this is to say, okay, if I know that technology is lagging the market because interest rates are going higher, which negatively impacts these higher PE, higher beta stocks within the tech environment, then what I'm what I want to know is when are interest rates going to stop and and when does tech then rally? Right? Because that helps you to start to see the lows in individual stocks. You're not going to buy the absolute low and you don't have to. But if you're looking for trading opportunities, these are the sectors where I think you will find them. Again, consumer discretionary financials, healthcare, industrials, materials, and technology. It's important to note on materials too. Uh, a, a couple of small points. One, the supply chain is, is catching up. It, it has not caught up to 2019 slash pre-pandemic levels. It's about 50 to 60% of the way there. Uh, I'll share a metric that uh, was shared with me that shows you how to gauge the recovery of the supply chain. But materials are a critical component to the supply chain, obviously. And whether we're talking about steel or semiconductors or silicone, that sector has to catch back up to underpin the manufacturing uh, element in the economy, which leads you from materials to industrials, right? And then industrials leads you from industrials to technology and consumer discretionary, right? The end product of what gets produced and ultimately purchased. Way too deep of a dive. I didn't really mean to do it that way. But again, utilize some of these sectors to say what was outperforming, what's underperforming, and where's my opportunity going to be in the next six to 12 months. And that brings me to a new concept, a new idea, which I call the stack. I will be slowly detailing this for you over the next four days, but I'm not going to give everything away to you in these videos. Instead, I want you to register for a free webinar, which is coming on Monday, September 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. It will be recorded, so you will be able to watch the replay if you register. If you are on the webinar, however, you'll get much more detail and a couple little interesting pieces that we'll be sharing with you. The idea behind the stack at its core is an option strategy which uses less capital, carries less risk, and gets higher returns. Now, I'll break this down for you over the next several days, but get your seat early, get your seat now. We have a limit on the number of seats that we can hold within this webinar room. This is a new idea. Uh, it is it is bringing something to you that we've been working on for the last 12 months in the background in both real money and uh, if you want to call it fake money testing, but the results that we've been getting have come from the real money testing that we have done. And I will share results, all of those results with you on the live webinar. Uh, But I will share 
sort of what the stack is, how it works over the next few days. This is simple. It is not time consuming and it is not, uh, it is, does not require you to be trading all day, so to speak. In fact, quite the opposite. Uh, but again, more details are coming throughout this week and full details, a full deep dive into what this idea of the stack is in our free webinar Monday, September 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You can register right here on this page. Just use the button, the link button directly below this video, and that will take you to our Zoom registration page. Uh, if Again, if you can't make the webinar, but you want the webinar replay, register anyway, because we will only send the replay to people who register. So get that in, and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's topic, we're going to dive into valuations on the S&P 500 and how that affects your trading. And then I'm going to take a little peek, sneak peek into what the stack is, and we'll continue on the rest of this week. So sitting in for Jeff Wood, who's off gallivanting somewhere in the in the whole wide world. Thank you. This is John Hutchinson for Traders Reserves, Filthy Rich Dirt Poor. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. And 